Okay, my name is Gladys Raddick. I'm uh, originally from Morristown, BC. Um, I'm Gitsan Wet'suwet'en, and I'm an advocate for the missing and murdered women across Canada, and particularly on the Highway of Tears. What does that entail, being an activist? Demanding actions. When, uh, when there's social grievances such as our missing and murdered women, uh, knowing the, uh, some of the stats, knowing some of the people, knowing the family members is what made me become an activist, is the family members' voices that have been silenced for so many years. This, this cause has been with, within my heart for, uh, since Tamara went missing, that's 18 years ago. And uh, I have nothing to hide. All I want is to tell our truth. I was born and raised in, in the North. Uh, I was in throughout uh, foster homes in Terrace, Kitimat and Prince Rupert, the northernmost tip of the Highway of Tears. And uh, the Highway of Tears ranges from Prince George to Prince Rupert, BC. That's it. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's really a lack of concern for the Aboriginal uh, component of this. And uh, most of our cases are still unsolved and missing. My niece is still missing. She was beautiful. She was fun. She was fun-loving. Uh, she was my brother's only daughter, natural daughter. And uh, she was spunky and she was funny, especially when she was little, and my little baldy. And uh, she grew up to be pretty feisty. She loved fast cars. She loved boats. And she, you know, she, she, was, she was really lots of fun to be around. I would say it goes back to the RCMP's mission statement where they need to get rid of the Indians. I think it's genocide. It's, uh, nobody cares, they're, they're after the land. They're after the land, that's basically what it is. And it's a land grab. They want the land and they want the resources. They want to rape the land and our women are disposable. I've been an activist since I was born. I was born into the struggle. I was born with tuberculosis. So I struggled for my first breath. Uh, I was hospitalized for my tuberculosis. That's my first in institution. I was returned to my mother and uh, consequently taken by uh, social services. And I was thrown into the foster care system at the age of five. And it wasn't a great system. <laughs> You know, uh, they uh, put me and uh, me and my, I call her my sister cousin, in the same foster home. And uh, we were raised together in, that, in several different foster homes. And uh, we were in Kitimat, and the people were white that uh, had taken us, and they really wanted to adopt both of us. But of course, my mother wouldn't sign the papers. Um, and then when they realized that our foster parents were getting too attached to us, they decided that they were going to put us into another home. So they put us into another temporary home in uh, Terrace uh, after I was in grade three when we were pulled out of there. And then uh, we went to, so we went to grade one, two, and three in Kitimat, and then uh, moved to Terrace, and they put us in with uh, our own people, they, they claimed. And uh, we ended up in a foster home in Terrace that was, uh, sexual abuse started immediately. Like, upon moving in there from both the father and the brother my foster sister uh, suffered through it. Uh, my cousin suffered through it, and I suffered through it. Yeah, through a lot of sexual abuse and basically slavery. Yeah.
beatings, violence, drinking. Drinking was normal in that home. I tried to report it actually as a child and they didn't listen to me. I tried to report it to a social worker, I tried to report it to the police, and I tried to report it to the principal of the school, and every, the principal of the school just looked at me and said, look, we've got so many students here now because they had just released a bunch of students from the Nass River to come into Terrace to go to school. So all of a sudden we were bombarded with, I think it was about 1,500, 2,000 more students. And they said, we have no more foster homes for you. We have no more no place to put you and they just said well you know suck it up buttercup uh, I left home at an early age and I started trying to run away to Vancouver of course and because usually that's uh, for most women and girls up in the north uh, the escape route is down to Vancouver in the hopes of a better life not realizing that when you're out of your small little territories up there that the racism is very much alive and well in the in the major hubs, Prince George, Vancouver. That's where you really feel it, and that's where you're targeted. Oh, I was on my own, definitely on my own, and I got used to the streets and did things I shouldn't have done, but I had to survive somehow. I was in survival mode the whole time. Yeah, and got into my fair share of drugs and alcohol. I had to mask my pain somehow. You know, I've heard over 10,000 stories from people who have lost loved ones right across this country. And I've heard it from aunties, uncles, grandfathers, grandmothers, sisters, everyone. And the pain is real. And so many of our families feel helpless because we know that this system that they have here in Canada is failing us miserably. Yes, we have uh, six people already from 2022 that are missing in Terrace. All ranges of people, all colors. East Indian woman, 59 years old. She just disappeared going for a walk. And there's nothing no sign of her anywhere. And the RCMP, nothing. And that attitude needs to change. Here we are in 2022, and I just found out just recently that we have finally reached the one million mark of registered Indians in Canada when we used to be 10 million and that's why we say genocide you get rid of the women no more babies but the reason for the activism is we stop that genocide right in its tracks the families are the ones that keep me going now because uh, there's so many of them that are still silenced. Uh, and, uh, you know, when, when, I, when I meet these family members and I tell them, you know, I'll speak out for you. What do you want? I'll ask them what they want. They want justice. Yeah. They want to find their loved ones. That's what keeps me going. And which is why... Uh, after Tamara went missing and realizing that after the uh, 2006 symposium they had in Prince George, didn't take long to realize that this government was going to do nothing.